Please welcome the Executive of the Friends, partners, distinguished guests, good morning. I bring you very warm greetings from the people of Sierra Leone. We are most pleased to be here with you, our international partners, representatives of potential investors and financial institutions, new friends, and our oldest friends, the representatives of the British government. Well, um, as the sole contestants for and winners of the Champions League and the Europa, <laughs> <laughs> who says UK is not a safe bet? <laughs> As a government, we are committed to doing more trade and investment. Of course, development assistance is fine, but what we need to do in Sierra Leone is to urgently create thousands of jobs for our young population while expanding and diversifying our economy in order to make it more resilient. We believe it takes private capital to do that. Lots of it. We recognize and welcome that the United Kingdom has taken a forward-looking view of this, and the UK government has committed to scaling up private capital investment in new areas of economic opportunity. I'm here this morning to share with you why Syria Union is one such place of great opportunity. And what we have done and are continuing to do to make it a destination of choice. I'm here to invite UK investors to access the great opportunity our country offers. <coughs> so I want to start off with what we all know. We are a very peaceful democracy we have had five peaceful elections and three peaceful transfers of power. Our friend, the British High Commissioner, can attest that there is no civil war in Sierra Leone again, no Ebola, no journalists have been thrown into jail, no human rights abuses, the rule of law reigns supreme in Sierra Leone. We have an advantage of location. We are only six hours away from the UK and Europe, four hours away from Brazil, and eight hours away from the United States of America. We have very rich soils, good rainfall volumes, lush landscapes, and one of the richest seas in the sub-region. We have 5.4 million hectares of arable land. We have spectacular seascapes, unexplored islands, breathtaking eco tourism potential, and a lot of clean beaches and sea for sport fishing and more. We have some of the richest mineral deposits of rutile, bauxite, iron ore, diamond, gold, and more. We have a youthful population that is eager to learn and to work. And we are investing heavily in their education and skills training. We have the deepest natural harbor in the South region. We are hard at work developing our network of roads in the country. As a country, we are signatories to trade agreements with Europe, the UK, the US, and across the entire African continent that grants us free, duty-free access to both those developed and emerging markets. We have developed a medium-term national development plan 
has its proven growth <coughs> and encourages private capital investment in key priority areas in agribusiness and fisheries, tourism, infrastructure, and renewable energy. The objective is to grow the economy with a diversified portfolio that creates jobs. This is what we all know. Let me now tell you what we have been doing over the last one year since, take over, since taking over government. We inherited an economy burdened with debt in which corruption was rife. The IMF and the World Bank, among others, had abandoned the country because of bad governance. The pace of new investments stalled, and iron ore mines especially ceased production as mortgages unraveled. So before and when we acceded to power, we asked ourselves questions about what business and investors would like us to do right. To our minds, long-term stability and predictability <coughs> in the economy is important to investors. I'm sure as investors, you put your money where there's minimum risk in the long term. We therefore set about getting the macroeconomics right. We clamped down on out-of-control spending, closed off leakages of fraud and waste, and abuse of funds. We have clamped down on corruption also. That is an ongoing fight. It is a fight we must fight, and it's a fight we must win. The corruption has a way of fighting that. But we are better, because we are prepared mentally for that fight. In the ratings of, of in the ratings on corruption by the Millennium Corporation Challenge, we moved from 47 points to 71 points on the scorecard for control of corruption. We believe that clamping down on corruption is good for governance, good for the economy, and especially good for business. It cuts out the unnecessary red tape corruption and unpredictability about registering and doing business, and there is less likelihood of predatory business thriving in the same economic space as other good businesses. <coughs> the IMF and the World Bank have re-established working relationship with Sierra Leone, and their assessment indicates that we continue getting the macroeconomic fundamentals right for us Fiscal discipline, controlling corruption, and a responsible management of our economy is good for business. But we have also anticipated a number of other questions businessmen and investors would ask. And we have either addressed them or we are proactively working on them. We recognize that new investors want to know about the process of registering their businesses, permits, licenses, real estate, and other regula regulations that impact their business. For those already established businesses, there may well be questions about ongoing memoranda of agreements, tax incentives, and general aftercare. We recognize that nothing frightens off an investor as much as uncertainty around these issues. So we have addressed those in two ways. We are formalizing the establishment of a national investment board that will be co-chaired by me and the vice president. It will also comprise the Syrian Investment and Export Promotion Agency and representatives from various agencies and government ministries. But more importantly, it will comprise representation from the private sector to facilitate dialogue between investment board and the private sector. We believe that aftercare for business is extremely important to maintaining existing investors whose good 
experience varieties we attract new investors. So, when finished, the investment forum will not only be a one-stop shop. Every every business and invest, for every business and investment, but it will also be a forum for continuous interaction and discussion between government and business about what we must continue getting right for the sake of businesses. While we are waiting for the formalization of the investment board, we have done necessary reforms of the existing corporate affairs commission to simplify the business of the to, to simplify the business registration process. No more endless forms, bribes to dodgy middlemen and facilitators, tortuous process that often lead to frustration. No more. The single window system in operation now at the Corporate Affairs Commission offers businesses the opportunity to register within 24 hours and receive both the National Security and Insurance Trust and tax identification numbers as part of the process of incorporation. In the coming years, if not months, my government, through the support of the World Bank, we established a fully automated online business registration and services portal. We have doubled the number of business businesses registered within the last year, and we have seen an upward tick in Sierra Leone's starting a business indicator and that of protecting minority investors under the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Report 2019. The starting a business indicator improved 28 places in rank in just one year, rating the indicator 55 out of 190 economies with a scoring of 91%. But beyond indicators, we introduced Sierra Leone's first ever national corporate governance code that seeks to improve transparency and accountability in the corporate governance landscape as an additional tool to be used alongside existing laws and regulations. It creates a platform for the adoption of global best practices <coughs> and trends, known to improve investment climate in any country. But the code is also sensitive to and speaks to SDG 5, which caters for effective participation of women in leadership. A minimum of 30% female representation is now required on all boards. We have women in here. <laughs> <laughs> this code has also enabled Sierra Leone to meet some of its obligations under the Global Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative by making it a requirement for beneficial ownership of companies to be reported. But we keep listening to business. The private sector had recently indicated that the environmental impact assessment and monitoring fees are a bit on the high side. The EIA fees are paid relative to the size of the environmental footprint of a particular company. So we have introduced necessary reforms in that area. In monthly reports, the EIA uses the metrics to inform companies of key assessment parameters and what they can do to mitigate observed environmental risks. By staying engaged with the private sector, the EIA has reduced fees by between 30 and 70 percent, and those fees are payable in loans and in installments. But we continue listening to business on what other investment incentives we can put on the table. We have an attractive regime of incentives, including waivers, tax breaks, uh, breaks tax credit, details of which the finance minister and the head of SLIPA will discuss in the coming sessions. But I see potential investors asking questions about infrastructures. Yes, we share your concern, and we believe that um, we should scale up government 
infrastructure spending to target specific investment areas. So we have done two things. First, <clears throat> I have established an Office of Presidential Infrastructure Initiative in the presidency headed by an engineer of great <coughs> pedigree. This guarantees that I get first-hand advice on purposeful and timely planning and implementation of growth oriented infrastructure initiatives. <coughs> we see infrastructure, infrastructure development in terms of energy, transport, road, bridges, water, energy, communication as critical enablers for investment. So while we cannot afford a nationwide infrastructure overhaul at this point, we are committed to working with investors and private capital to plan and develop infrastructure. We are guided by the key principles of competitive bidding, sound debt management policy, and transparent and in-depth feasibility studies when pursuing infrastructure investments. Our key priority areas for infrastructure Infrastructure support are in tourism and agribusiness. In talking to business, we have had concerns from investors around power generation capacity. Why we have started large scale investment in rural mini grid, there is still a heavy demand from the urban areas. Mini grids won't likely serve business well. With mining and agribusiness, especially, there is a tendency for investors to vertically integrate power in their production processes. So we have a number of pending options. First, we have made room for private investment in the generation and distribution of sub-sectors. Second, the West African power pool market will also play a major role in delivering Sierra Leone's energy security. The West African Power Pool network traverses the country from northwest to the southeast with five substations and it straddles potential hydroelectricity capacity. The CLSG transmission line will facilitate regional trade in surplus generation capacity from Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea, Ghana, and Liberia. Business has also highlighted the issue of access to the country and the difficulty of this process. We want tourists. We want investors and business people. We want experts, innovators, doctors, and other highly skilled professionals. We are finalizing a complete review of the visa process to make it even easier for these categories of people to enter the country. We are listening to business and we continue acting to make business easy for business. We are eager to cultivate a culture of trust and confidence around investing in Sierra Leone. We want our potential investors to know that we are looking for credible partners who are interested in sustainable, long-term, win-win relationship where they know that their investments are protected by a government that truly cares about the business and they are able to make good returns on their investment. As I mentioned earlier, we are working, we are looking to diversify our economy with private capital investment. So we are offering a number of opportunities. In tourism, we are offering our friends a new destination to discover one that is known for its long stretches of pristine beaches and with particularly unique <coughs> eco-tourism potential, including sporting, spot fishing, diving, and hiking on undiscovered majestic mountains, mountain ranges in the north, <coughs> the calm Lake Songfon and the wildlife park Fona and Siwai Islands to the south. We are developing a long-term vision and the Minister of Tourism will speak to the details of how we are building capacity in the sector, reviewing visa process, 
reducing the cost of travel to Sierra Leone. For agriculture, we have 5.4 million hectares of arable land, of which only 15% is currently under cultivation. We want to, to do more with the countries and the region's staple food, rice. There's a potential of $3 billion equity market open to investors. So we are looking at other possibilities in livestock, farming, cash crop, fruits, horticulture, and vegetables. The soil and rainfall volumes are right, and we have a young population that is eager to work and eager to learn. We want to create a value chain, <coughs> value chain around these products. There is also a market for agro input, like improved seeds, fertilizers, among others. We offer favorable investment incentives in this sector, and there are already established companies working in Sweden. For instance, Go International is a juice company growing pineapples for kind for, for canning. Myro Forestry is a CDC funded sustainable timber company. Sapfin is a sustainable palm oil company. Sunbird is growing sugar, uh, sugar cane for bioethanol and biomass power. We are working with the commercial agricultural producers and processors are user friendly, quick and secure. The new framework will also be presented to Kaveni soon and it will ensure that Suridium is very competitive within the South region. In the area of energy, Australia <coughs> offers great opportunity, potential for renewables with a huge high regeneration potential and high solar irradiation capacity. There is also good wind potential. There is also a huge market in Suridium region for off-grid energy and we are positioned in Australia to be the regional hub for off-grid off energy. The country has developed fair and transparent procedures for private sector participation in energy investment through PPPs. The institutional capacity, the institutional arrangement for issuance of IPP license, execution of PP, PPP agreements, and general regulation of the energy sector are uh, enhanced and streamlined. In the area of mining, we have recently commissioned a very comprehensive nationwide high-resolution airborne geophysical, which will <coughs> be augmented by detailed ge geological and geochemical surveys. This will help us ascertain the full extent of the country's mineral potential <coughs> and thus improve the geological knowledge of Ceredion to assist investors in selecting prospective areas for licensed applications. The geologi geological survey has been accompanied by the launch of three new policy documents, Ceredion Mineral Policy, Geodata Management Policy, and Artisanal Policy, based on Africa, Africa mining vision, in, which was uh, adopted in early 2019. The aims are to attract private investment in exploration and mining, emphasize integration of the mineral sector with the rest of the economy, establish a fiscal regime which balances the benefit with the investment competitiveness, support mineral beneficiation and marketing, guide investors towards sustainable exploitation of mineral resources of Sierra Leone in a win-win manner and enable Sierra Leone to obtain maximum benefits from its mineral deposits. The National Mineral Agency is developing an improved integrated geo information management system and a block-based mining cadastral administration system that is fully aligned with international best practices and the requirements of an, the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. So, just to say, we are making, we are embarking on a large project 
of reforming our business environment to attract foreign and local investment to Australia. We will simplify the bureaucracy around requirements and regulations for business and invest and investment. One that is responsive to the needs of business. One that is learning and growing every day to respond to the needs and requests of investors. Thank you very much, and I wish you a good day.